Here's what's happening at The Truth. The Church Center app will keep you connected to the truth with features like the church calendar, registration for events, and much more. Parents of the Truth, this is a reminder that children's ministry will be held today and every first and third Sunday for ages 6 through 12. Members, partners, and friends, join us April 27th and 28th for a weekend of celebration as we unveil our new look, our new order, and our new brand. Stop by the Upper Room for the Vision Refresh Sale. Get 25% off the limited edition God's Plan hoodies, sweatshirts, and much more. On May 12th, our Praise and Worship team will be a part of the 2024 Choir Showcase Weekend Experience. Ladies, save the date. Truth and Fellowship Church presents the Glory on That Girl Women's Conference on May 17th and 18th. Calling all men. Save the date. The Men of Valor P4 Conference will be August 16th and 17th. Middle school, high school, and college students. Meet Youth Pastor Ed every second and fourth Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for Truth Student Ministry Connect. Members, partners, and friends, every first Wednesday at 7 p.m., join us in person or online for Super Wednesday. All of our prime timers, those of you 65 and older, this is a reminder that the free Bible and brunch will be held every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Truth and Fellowship, join us every third Wednesday at 7 p.m. in person here at The Truth for Family Focus Night. We have ministry volunteer opportunities here at The Truth. If you have a passion for creativity or children and desire to use your talents to glorify God, consider joining our creative team or children's ministry. To sign up, please see Ms. Layada Young. Connect with us. Our email address is info at t-fm.org. Our phone number is 843-767-8855. Our worship times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. place unhindered and touched by any satanic force and in advance i give you all the praise glory and honor in jesus name and everybody who agrees shout amen amen the more i pursue understanding god and living out god's plan and uh connecting people to god the more god reveals to me uh thank you uh, miss, miss patricia mead she she tells me on sunday is she here she tells me on sunday there she goes she says oh my god you just changed. You had a whole nother level in your teaching. And uh, I was thinking about her when I wrote the lesson, how she always encouraged it. Oh, my God, man of God, you got me in a whole I, you you teaching at a whole nother level. Now, she's happy, but everybody else ain't happy because they want to keep the same old thing because they want to do the same old thing. But you can't have elevation and things don't change in your life. The more I pursue understanding the heart of God, God continues to reveal to me that, uh, that his people don't miss it. And I believe that um, when we understand things God's way, it empowers us, but not only does it empower us, it's, it equips us, and that's what gives us great victory. In life, the Bible says we're going to have trouble, tribulations, trials. Every one of us, there's a storm out there brewing with our name on it. But the determining factor of victory will be how we navigate through it. God tells us in Isaiah, you don't think like me. 
nor are your ways like mine. So he's telling us if we're going to be victorious, we're going to have to learn how to think like him and do it like him. And if we can think and do it like God, it gives us that win. Now, win for one may not be win for another. Win for one may be that they get their bills paid, they reconcile family uh, separation or whatever the case may be. Win could be a healing in the body. Win could be a peace in the mind. But whatever your win is, it doesn't matter. If you learn how to worship God, you will always have a win. So it don't take this when we talk about worship and giving. Don't take it as a money thing. Whatever your win, you want your win to be today. Before the end of this day, I guarantee you, if you hear this word, whatever it is, rather be peace in your mind, sickness in your body. It, it could be issues that you've been dealing with. It could be uh, mental health. It doesn't matter. Today, you're going to get your win if you learn how to worship God. Bible says in John 4 23 in the New Living Translation it tells us a story and I, I'm not going to read the whole story but I'm going to talk, talk you through it because this girl got a win because she accepted the lesson on worship take me to the scriptures it says so here's this story about this girl and in the story Jesus was, I can't read it all, but Jesus was at the well and she comes to the well and Jesus sitting on the well. And Jesus tells her, dip me some water. She looks at Jesus like he's crazy. What you mean? You sitting here waiting for me to get here. You could have dipped your own water. That's what the lady said. And then she says, we don't even have a bucket and a rope deep enough. And Jesus tells her, say, hey, let me tell you something. If you know who's asking you to give him some water, you wouldn't be talking to me like that. Then she went on to talk about the forefather owned the well. And Jesus went on to saying, you know, listen, you don't know me. The water, if you give me this, live, this water here, I'll give you living water that will give you your win in life. Where is your husband? I don't have one. Jesus said, I know. And the other five, you lost. In other words, Jesus said, you need a win, girl, because you've been married six times and ain't none of them work. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. Jesus said, you need a win. She said, wait a minute, hold on. How you know I've been married six times? Jesus said, I told you, if you knew who was asking you for water. And so we're going to get it down to the 23rd verse. I, can't, I don't want to read all that. Y'all go back and read John 4, the whole chapter. Jesus said, but the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, and in truth for the father is looking for those who will worship him that way 24th verse for God is spirit so those that do what now worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so Jesus gets this woman with this problem she needed a win she didn't need to try to get married no more <laughs> After six times, all you need to do is worship God. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. If, 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 if you've been going through this thing where sometimes up and sometimes down, and seem like your life goes through a cycle where you, you go through these bad periods all the time, you don't need to try nothing new but just stop and worship God. Because that's what he's looking for. So today, <laughs> I'm going to take you to the origin of worship with an understanding that will empower and equip you so you will have a win. Worship. 
worship. Somebody said, worship, worship, worship. Did we worship God today? Did we worship him today? Come on, holler at me some. Did we? When did we worship God? <laughs> did we worship him today? When did we worship him? I know you're going to tell me we worship him with all this singing. But I have studied the Bible 175 times in the scriptures and you cannot attach music to worship. We call it praise and worship because we sing songs and we sing them slow. But when I studied the scripture, God revealed to me they are off. Because if in fact worship when we worship, God speaks. When we worship, we get a win. Why aren't people winning after the song? Can I teach a little bit today? So the real question is, where did we get this thing from putting music with worship? Where? There's something called the law of new meaning and the law of first mention. The law of first mention means that the first time you hear it, it establishes the origin of how everything moves. In other words, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a summer pop. It's kind of like a brick mason when he gets ready to brick up a house. He has that first brick. And wherever that first brick is laid, everything else is built off of that. So I, when I find the first time in scripture where God talks about worship, if I can't find the instrument, ain't no need of me trying to put an instrument there. Worship. The Bible says that Jesus was the chief cornerstone. So in other words, Jesus was the first stone for the building of the kingdom. And everything else has to be done in accordance to who Jesus is. It's the law of first mention. So the first time we can find worship is in the book of Genesis. Y'all ready? Genesis 22 and 1 in the New Living Translation. Let's go there. Scripture says that sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here am I. He said, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early and he saddled his donkey and he took two of his servants with him along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire and a, 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 for a burnt offering and set it on that, for that place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servant. Watch this now. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there. Now, it never said he had instruments. It did say he had wood and fire, but we don't hear any instruments. It didn't say he had a praise and worship team. It didn't say he had LED light backdrop. It didn't say he had smoke, any of that stuff, but he did have wood and fire and Isaac. So the first mention of worship was not on somebody's platform and everybody's singing and the musicians playing. So where we got this thing where we are worshiping God with music, I believe we missed it and that's why people don't see wins. Now am I saying we don't supposed to praise God? I did not say that. The Bible said bring all of the cymbals, bring all of the harps and bring all of the instruments and give God praise. But he never said bring the instruments and give him 
So we've been coming in here, and y'all know it. Come on. It's okay to be wrong. Truth is truth until somebody help you see it. And I'm going to help you see it. You said earlier that we worship God. No, we didn't. We just sung praises to God. Rather, the songs were high or low. Because there cannot be any worship if there's not an offer. So the Bible says, I'll travel a little farther, and we will worship there. Watch this right here. And we will come right back. I always thought of the question. Let, let's go back and read that again. Can I take my time this morning? Yeah, I got a little time. Look like it. We're going to get out of church early. Dang. Let's look at, go back to the first verse. Let's just, let's, can we walk through the Bible a little bit? Sometimes we need to come to church and think. Look at what the Bible says. Sometimes later God tested Abraham's faith and Say, Abraham, God called him. He said, yes, and he replied, here am I. And look at what he says. He says, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, and go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Now, wait, 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 wait a minute. God's telling Abraham to go kill his boy and set him afire. Because that's what it meant, sacrifice. Slay him, burnt offering, catch a fire. He says, go and set your boy on fire. On one of the mountains, I will show you. Go to the fifth verse. Abraham says, okay, y'all stay here with the donkey. Me and the boy, we're going to travel a little farther, and we will worship there, and then we will be right back. Now, wait a minute. How you going to say that when God instructed you to kill that boy and set him afire? How, how are you going to say we gonna be right back. Because Abraham understood I will always have a win when I worship. Abraham understood if I kill this boy and set him afire in obedience to God, God's got to bring his ashes back to bones and put skin back on his bones. But we're coming back. Worship. So did we really worship today? Or was we excited singing and giving God praise? It's okay. Because I know you learned it this way. You got it. Some of you right now are mad as you know what that means. Because it's forcing your so smart mentality. But I don't care about how smart you are. I don't care about how anointed you think you are. What I'm concerned about is you learning how to win in life. I'll teach you how to do that. So I'm going to work this word with Genesis, with Abraham. He didn't have a praise and worship team. It was just him at 100 and a teenager. They didn't have no keyboard play. Y'all keep, don't you move, don't y'all leave me. They didn't have a bass player and a drummer. Don't leave me. Y'all have a place, but not at the place of worship. I wish I had some help up in here. Our band has a place but not at the place of worship. Help me, Holy Ghost. See, what our band does, Leada, is bring him on the scene. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises. In other words, that word inhabit, T-R, means to, he's enthroned. So when we are praising God and when the band is playing and the singers are singing, God shows up. But then when we shut all that down and go into worship, when it's time for us to give an offering, see, your tithe should have new meaning now. So when it's time for us to give an offering, that's when God gives us the win. He don't give us the win on all the dancing. He <laughs> He doesn't give us the win on all the jumping around, but he does give us the win on that offering because that offering represents that obedience. Worship. Somebody say worship, worship. I'm, because I'm a doctor, I define worship like I, I, I get it out of the scripture. And uh, lately I have been studying Latin words because I want a more in-depth meaning of a thing. Worship is 
an act of obedience with the posture of humility, honor, and paying homage to God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, watch this, being persistent until you have completed the task and gained the victory. That's worship. See, when I studied Genesis 22 and I looked at how Abraham prepared himself to worship God, Lord, help me, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I'm saying, wait a minute, God. Worship ain't had nothing to do with singing. It was an act of obedience. It was an act of obedience with this posture of humility, honor, and paying homage to you, God, and being persistent until you have done everything he told you to do. Man, y'all know the story. Isaac, Father, I see the fire in the wood. Where is the sacrifice? Don't worry. God will provide himself when Abraham said. I see Abraham getting to the top of the mountain. Still don't have a sacrifice from God. But it didn't stop him from building that altar and tying his son down on that altar. Oh, he's persistent, y'all. Still waiting on that sacrifice. I wish I had. In other words, he's going through every act of obedience. To the degree after he has him tied down, he lifts his hand to slay him. And then God speaks, Abraham, Abraham. In other words, we could say it like this right here, at the last minute. Oh, y'all wish I had. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So y'all got to quit saying stuff like he may not come when you want him. It ain't over till God say so, y'all. You don't really need the down payment until you get the closing. You don't need the down payment on the house until you get the closing. You, 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 you don't need the down payment on the car until you go to the dealership to sign the paperwork. I wish I had some help up in here. You don't need wisdom for the new job until you're on the job and you got to make a wise decision. So why are you fearful if you can do the job or not? I can do it because I don't need the wisdom until I get there and I got to make a decision. So whatever is my lot, I can say it is well. Oh, I wish I had some help up in it. Whatever, whatever is your lot, you can declare it is. I got it. I'm good. Worship. Worship, worship, worship. It's an act of obedience. It's not singing. It's. It's not music and slow songs. It's not, <laughs> we're going to have us a worship a revival. It's not a mini concert. It's <laughs> Take me over to Psalm 95 and 6. Come on. It's not, it's not any of that. It's an act of obedience where we're paying homage. We're humble. We're honoring God. That's what worship re really is. In Psalm, Psalms 95 and 6, David tells us how to do it. Look at what David said. Oh, come, let us worship and sing. Ooh. Oh, come, let us worship and praise him. No. Oh, come, let us what now? Worship and do what? It's a posture. Let us bow down. Let us do what now? Kneel before the Lord our maker. Worship ain't all about that, what we, been, what we say we've been doing. Watch this. Even I thought it was. I said, shoot. We run here talking about we're going to have time of praise and worship. Man, we ain't never done no work. 30 years. We just are singing. Just a singing. The next 30 years, we ain't going to do it like that. Oh. So the people that came in on the last hour, you will get the same pay as the people come in on the first hour. Yeah. He says, oh, come. Look at what he said. Let us worship. And do what now? Bow down. Let us kneel before our. Now, we've heard that before, didn't we? Say yes. 
when do we hear it, Pastor? Lady with the issue of blood. She pressed through the crowd. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. Can stand up, Monique, please. She pressed through the crowd. And watch this now. She didn't get and hug Jesus. He didn't lay his hands on her. But she touched. In other words, she had to get low, y'all. Oh, it's a posture. She had to get low and touch. In other words, it's a posture. She had to get low and touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible says she got a win. The Bible says Jesus felt the virtue leave his garment. In other words, that worship causes power to travel. Lord, let me preach today. She touched the hem of his garment. We, we, we didn't heard that before. Say, yes, the ten lepers. You can sit down, baby. The ten lepers. They yelled, Jesus, have mercy upon us. And, and, and they had leprosy. Jesus knew what their problem was. And he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Well, when I went back and studied worship, Shonda, I saw something different. They turned around and they were healed by faith. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. They were healed by faith, but they weren't healed by manifestation. They had the confidence that because I'm going toward the priest, I will be healed. They were healed by faith. But it was only one that had the healing by manifestation. That was the dude that took his faith and added action to it. And he bowed down and worshiped him and he got a win. I always used to wonder what happened to the other nine. They didn't have the manifestation, but they had the faith to be healed. Like some of you, you got the faith to be blessed, but you don't do the natural like worship God to get there. How many of y'all believe? that when you tithe, God opens up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing. Wave to me if you believe that. Come on. How many of y'all believe that? Come on, wave high. If I tithe, okay, see, you got the faith for it, but why don't you tithe? <laughs> you don't have the worship part. See, a lot of us got the faith part, mother, but we don't have the worship part. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. See, there's a lot of people that believe I am a man of God. But they don't have the worship part. And that part is honor that day. Because that's all it is. It's a posture. It's an act of obedience. Now, I'm not saying you worship me. I'm just simply saying, well, if I'm that person, where is the honor? See, you can believe it, but you don't have the other part. And the other part is the part most people be missing. And the part that we miss to get a win for our win is worship. It's an act. It's a posture. It's not a song. I can give definition to worship because the first time I hit, heard about worship wasn't at a concert. It was a 100-year-old man, 13-year-old boy, going on a mountain, and this boy was about to lose his life. So I understand that's the law of first name. So when I go back and study all these other statements of worship in the Bible, I don't see instruments. Where do we get this singing and worship from? Yeah, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Worship. It's a posture. Say it's a posture. See, you gotta hum see, it takes humility to tithe. It takes respect and honor for God to tithe. It takes paying tithing. It's paying homage when you obey God in that area and giving up an offering. Watch this here. It takes humility to serve. Oh, okay, you, you understand when y'all need some help on that? Can, can I use you again, uh, uh, Dr. Gilmore? Dr. Ashley Gilmore. You don't mind telling them your age? 33 years old. Accomplished all this. 33 years old wife and two kids. 
She could come in here and say, well, I'm the doctor, first lieutenant in the United States Air Force. If I cannot be the vice president of operations, I don't want to be in this church. But she comes and says, whatever. Oh, see, she don't let her accolades and her title in the world try to make her be, wherever you need me, sir, if you need me to put them bags in the car, put them bags in the car. Sir, if you need me to help you pick up all this trash, I'll help you pick up all this trash. But whatever you need, oh, oh sound like to me, it's understanding worship. She's not worshiping the man. She's worshiping the God doing a God assignment. Some of us, God's hands on me, I'm cold. Ain't proved nothing. Jesus told the girl, you got too many problems to be talking about a well and a mountain. You need to worship me. Some of you got too many problems to try to take on somebody else's power. Till you get your problems straight. Hello, somebody. You got too much. You're doing too much in life for you to be trying to take a role. Quit trying to write a book you don't have no testimony on. You're going to take an excerpt out of somebody else's book and try to make it your book. No, when you have lived out the part, then talk about it. I can talk about prosperity because I was poor. And now I'm rich. I've lived out the part. But before I'm going to write the book, I'm going to make sure I've tried it and proved it myself. She's trying to mention to Jesus and talk to Jesus about a well and about her father and about we this and this and that. You understand what I'm saying? And Jesus said, baby, you got too many problems. You've been married six times. Don't look like you're getting this one right. The next one come on. What you need to do is start worshiping me. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're getting this. Tell them. Come on, minister to them. And let them get mad with you. Let them get mad. We, I want to provoke you right now today. Because see, here it is. God told me, I'll connect the people to you, but you better connect them to me. That's all it is. Worship. It's this posture of honor and homage and humility. Worship. Say worship. Worship. This, this act of obedience that causes you to be persistent. Now, I, where are my educators at? Is Miss Robin here? I'm talking about my educator. Miss Robin, there you go. Miss Robin, I learned a new word. I bet you don't know the word. It's called, I can't hardly pronounce it, polycentrism. You ever heard that word before? See, good. See, that's, I, I, that's why I'm the pastor. Anybody know what that word means? Good. Oh, look at God. God's going to always keep me at the forefront to help y'all out. It's spelled P O. <laughs> it's spelled Robin P O L I S I N D T O N. Just Google it. It's a new word, Ashley. I learned. And this word is a word, a big word. But it makes small words develop a sense of urgency about something. And it's normally the words it deal with is conjunctions, like and or stuff like that. Well, I found this word in the Bible in Genesis 22, 3 through 5. In those three verses of Scripture, Miss Robin, the writer used the word and. 12 times with no commas. Now they told me I was wrong because I used to talk like that. And, 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 and. But as I began to study this, I understood that God used these words and 12 times because he wanted to paint a picture of what it looks like to be prepared to worship him. Could you take me over to Genesis 22 and um, uh, uh, let's go over to the third verse. It's this sense of urgency with the emphasis on a particular thing. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Wait a minute, God tells Abraham, can I just talk y'all through this right here? I don't want to preach no more. God tells Abraham to offer up his son as a burnt offering. And the Bible tells me, and Abraham rose up early. Man, I would have took all the time in the world talking about killing my children. Anybody here besides me would have done that. 
And God told, says to Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for burnt offerings and rose up and went into a place which God had told him. Seven times in one verse, and. That word I spelled out, it's a big word that deals with small conjunctions and it's designed to put an emphasis on something. It's designed to show you the urgency of something. So Abraham going to worship God wasn't a casual move. That's all I'm trying to show y'all. He got up early in the morning. In other words, he couldn't sleep because he wanted to worship God. Lord, help me, Jesus. When will you set aside? Ah, y'all know I'm going somewhere. When will you set aside some sleep so you can worship God? He got up early in the morning, and he, he understood he had a journey, so he saddled his ass, and he took two of his young men. He woke them up to them servants. Y'all got to get up because we got an early move because I got to worship God. In other words, everything was an urgency to him. Look at what it says. Then he woke his son up Isaac. He cut wood before he left. He didn't wait till he got to the mountain to start cutting wood. He cut the wood before he left. In other words, he was preparing himself to worship God. The Bible said he cut wood for the burnt offering and he rose up and he went into the place went unto the place which God had told him. Watch this now. Seven times in verse 3, and. Then on the third day, Abraham, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place of far off. Y'all getting it? Eight times now. Fifth verse. And Abraham said unto his men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder, and worship, and come again. He keeps talking about this, and in other words, things was going to happen so fast. Can I prophesy this morning? When you allow the true spirit of worship and you become a true worshiper, things will start happening for you so fast until it'll make your head swim. But God is looking for true worship. He's not looking for what they told you. You can come in this house and sing and all of a sudden and bow down and sing softly and tell God how much I love you and trust you. You don't need all that. God's looking for that posture of obedience. Whatever I tell you to do, you're going to do it and do it quickly. We've heard that before. Say yes. Jesus sitting at, at the table in the upper room and he said with all of his disciples, there's one of you going to betray me. Whatever you're going to do, go and do it quickly. In other words, if you're going to do something, if you're going to obey, obey quickly. Most people miss their victory because they procrastinate. Lord, help me, Jesus. I said most people miss their victory because they procrastinate. See, they tie their victory to them. But you got to learn to tie your victory to worship. No, 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 no. The, 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 <laughs> The other day, I was I was at a I was at a, 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 a my friend Bishop's house, Lady Sabrina and I, and we were in the swimming pool talking about the things of God. You understand what I'm saying? We we having a good time, and and, and her son walks up, and her son comes in, and he's talking, and says, "Oh, thank you, Jesus." He said, "Uh," he, she said, "Well, hey, wh where's your smile?" And he says, "What can I do? What can I do to put a smile on your face?" When she said that. I started staring. I don't know what happened. I was staring. She's looking at me. I'm looking at his son. See, he don't even know I'm looking at him. We just looking. I'm saying, whoa. And then God says to me, give him, watch this now, specific. God says, give him your blue Breitling watch. I said, hey, in the middle of it. <laughs> That's what you call loud. <laughs> hey. She looked over. He looked up. Say, hey, Unc. I said, what's up? I said, but guess what? God just told me to give you my blue Brightland watch. Now watch this. If he said the blue one, that means I got another color. And I said, I just brought this watch back in September when I was over in Europe, but God tells me I've got to give it to you. And looked up at Sabrina. She was sitting in the hammock about to go to sleep. I said, Sabrina, God tells me to give him my blue Brightland watch. And Sabrina, he's God. 
So I had to start working. Okay, when I get home, I'm telling you, when I get home, as soon as I get off this plane, I'm going straight to my safe, and I'm going to get the, I'm going to give you the warranty and everything, and I'm going to, I started talking everything I'm going to do. As soon as I got home, I went straight to my safe, and I got to watch, pull a box, put everything together, took a picture of it. Then I looked around, and I realized I couldn't make the uh, uh, FedEx, because I told him I had FedEx. Sent him a text, say, hey, supposed to have it at FedEx, but I couldn't FedEx because the FedEx is closed too late. He said, oh, don't worry. Thank you so very much. No, I got to do it with urgency because if I want a victory, if I want to win, I got to move quick. So worship God. Worshiping God is an act of obedience. God gave me that offering. He started, oh, my God, crying. She says, brother, I love you. And I'm sitting there like, what y'all talking about? I'm giving up this water. So, hey, hey, glory to God. I'm obeying God. Woo-wee. She says, tell him. He comes. He says, I feel like jumping in the water with all my clothes. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put some women together. And he says, no. He says, oh, look, look. Uh-huh. He shows me on the phone. He says, I'm in faith for a blue, bright, and wash. He said, I have been believing God for this. He said, matter of fact, watch this right here. I had given a significant seed during the time of our impact giving at our church because I wanted God to come through for me. I said, well, I got to tell you something, son. Nephew, God just came through for you because I heard God clear as day, and I'm going to obey him. Watch this. Ooh, I feel like preaching. He says, well, it's a good ground. ground of sowing stuff. So what are you talking about? I said, I don't know nothing about good ground. That's not my judgment call. I ain't worrying about my return because of good ground. My return could become my obedience. Because I obeyed God. Whether you deserve it or not in my eyes don't mean nothing to me. God told me to do it. See, the problem is yes, we hold back thinking people deserve it or not. Yes, That's why folks still broke, y'all. That's why folk are not winning in their money. People are not winning in their money because they're trying to judge the people instead of obeying God. I said, hey, I don't know nothing about no good ground. I heard from God. So rather they deserve it or not in my eyes is none of my business. That's between God and them. What is my business is I heard God say, give that blue wash. See, that's the problem. We're trying to worship God based on our own mental persuasion closing now. I know y'all don't believe it, but I am. I don't believe it either, but I'm going to close. Come on, somebody say obedience. Emphasis. It's an emphasis. So when we talk about worship, worship will always be will always be with an emphasis of urgency and it will always be with an emphasis, emphasis of specifics. And it'll always emphasize specifics and particulars. I can show it to you in the Bible. Take me back to Genesis 22 again. Watch this. Now, I learned something else, Dr. Robert. In my study, sometimes you got to read the Bible like how Jews communicate. So I learned something. I learned commas mean something. Commas, commas make a suggestion that there's more to the conversation that is written. So could you take me back to Genesis 22 and 1? Let's watch the commas. And it came to pass after these things. Now I don't know what things he's talking about, but there were some things that happened before that. That God did tempt Abraham. I don't believe, comma, the comma suggests that there was some other things Abraham had to do too that was a part of tempting him. But he emphasized the one with Isaac. Ooh. And God said to him, okay, watch this. And God said to him, that comma tells me that this is not a commandment, this is a conversation. Because God just talking now. God says to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Yep second verse, he said, take now thy son, comma. Abraham says, 
Which one? I got two. Oh. I got Ishmael and Isaac. Conversation going on now. Which one? He says, thine only son. Hold on, God. Both of them are mine. Who are you talking about, God? Because both of them are mine. He says, thine only son. Isaac. Specific. Abraham wished he was talking about Ishmael. Let's read it again. Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Watch this. Isaac. Don't play with me, Abraham. You know which one I'm talking about. The one you love. Because the other one you put away. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. The one you love, Isaac. <laughs> and that's the one I want. I went back, took the wine glass, and said, Well, God, y'all, I'll be having a conversation with God, Miss Mary. I said, God, what was this conversation about? God says, Tell my people, I'm sick and tired of them bringing me their mistakes and mess. Bring me their miracles. True worship is not bringing God your mess and your mistakes. True worship is whatever you prayed about and God came through, can you offer that up to him? Isaac was his miracle, but Ishmael was his mess and his mistake. The problem with the saints, they always coming to the altar talking about they worshiping God and all they doing is bringing God their mess and their mistakes. What about that new car God blessed you with? Can you give somebody a ride? What about that new house God blessed you with that you hadn't even provided dinner for no one in? But you will always bring your mess to God. You always want God to deal with your mistakes. God said, no, I want true worship. I want your miracle. <laughs> I want your miracle. The hour has come, truth and fellowship. That it's time for us to quit playing God with token gifts. Pastor shouldn't have to beg you to tithe. That's your miracle. Pastor shouldn't have to beg you to sow. Why are you going to tell me about how God has blessed you financially? But he's still looking for you. You're still bringing him your mess. you still like Cain. You'll take what he give you and you'll squander it out. And then at the hour when it's time to worship him, you got to scramble through your pocketbook. You got to look at how much you can write because you done messed up all the rest and want God to bless you on that. God says, I want your miracle. I don't want your mess. Worship. The hour has come. But we got to quit playing with God. You come in the line want somebody to pray over you. Oh, I got to tell y'all something. I'm about to get in trouble. Ooh, I'm about to get in trouble, baby. I'm going to get in trouble today, but it's going to be good. I don't have no time for you when I can't find you. You want service. You want honor God, but you want me to be in prayer and in agreement with you for stuff. God can't find you on Sunday. You can do everything you big and bad enough to do. God says, don't take their mess no more. Let them bring you their miracle. Yeah, let them bring you their miracle. The other day, Dr. Gilmore was sent to St. Louis, Missouri in a leadership training. The United States Air Force was training her to be a high-level leader. And every day she would call me and tell me what the class was about. I was getting excited. Oh, glory to God. She thought I was getting excited because she got good information. I don't care about no good information. And the last day she called and said, sir, you ain't going to believe it. She just went on. So I said, okay, good. When you get back, will you get on the stage and teach our people this? Did she tell me, huh? No, huh, nothing. Don't bring me your mess. Bring me your miracles. If they bless you, they spent money, flew you around the country to learn great things, well, some of that ought to come and be on this platform and serve God. Don't have a skill in this church, and you want to do it and try to be big all by yourself, but yet when all hell breaks loose, you're looking for the ministerial team to pray you out of it. God don't want your mess. 
your mistakes, he wants your miracles. That's what he wants. So, vision repair. She's going to be standing on the stage talking about leadership. Yeah. Bring me your miracle. Come on, look at somebody and say, I need to bring God my miracle. That's in the Bible, baby. Guy was living in the in the cemetery. The Bible said he had a legion of demons. Thank you. Jesus, get off the boat. Cast them demons out of that boy. That boy didn't want to bring his mess to Jesus. That boy said, when Jesus got ready to get on that boat, that boy said, hold on, hold on. Don't let this boat leave me because I want to be with you. Jesus said, no, I don't need you to be with me. I don't want your mess. I want your miracle. I want you to go back and go to your family's house. Go into the community and go around and tell everybody how good God is. The scripture says he gave Jesus his miracle by winning 10 cities. I don't want to hear your testimony if you ain't planning on worshiping God with it. Hello? Why it's always, this is what I'm going through. Why is it always God help me? That's our mess. Why is it always the problem? My wife won't act right. My husband won't act right. That's your mess. God said, okay, that is it. That's your mess. Why don't you bring me your miracle? Why don't you bring me you still alive? Why can't I find you ushering? Why can't I find you? I wish I had some help up in here. Why can't I find you serving somewhere? Why you want to bring me all your problems, God said. God says the hour has come, and it's now that I'm looking for true worshipers. I'm looking for people who are going to say, God, you've been good to me. I've watched you round after round. God, keep on blessing me, looking beyond my faults, supplying me with my every need. Oh, God, I'm coming to you now with my miracle and not my mess. God, I've been out here in this world. I've learned a lot, done a lot, been through a lot of stuff. You've always been there. Now, God, you can count on me. Yeah. Why we got to fall and be down low and then come to the church and want to serve God? Why we, why we can't serve God when we're at the apex of our success? Why are we always going after everybody who fail? Why can't we go after, why can't we just go after Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos? Why can't we go after them? Why we got to find the people who done gone through something and then we going to use that? that? That ain't nothing but a game. us out. Job said, the Lord giveth. We get excited about that part. But the Lord taketh away. We're not ready to give him back nothing. Yeah. It's amazing how everything is a price tag when it comes to God. Jesus told that lady, girl, if you knew who was asking you for water, you wouldn't be tripping like you tripped. why I like Dr. Robin McClellan and Dr. Gilmore and many others. But I like them. I watch them pursue. I watch them pursue. Leonora James, Teacher of the Year. I, I, why, I love them. Why, why, Pastor? It's why. Because I see them always giving God their miracle. You know what I mean? So I watch Dr. Robin become a doctor then y'all don't know when there's no school she comes in the finance office and sits in there and plugs in 
all of the envelopes. She just is humble. She be laughing. You understand? Hey, Pastor. Hey, Bishop. Love you, Bishop. Just, what you doing, Russell? I'm just putting in some, I'm just filing. They needed me to shred some paper. Wait a minute, you the doctor, but you don't mind humbling yourself to shred? Lord, I wish that. That's why she don't want for nothing. She's always going to have a win because of her worship. I like the teacher of the year. Zia Moore, I like people like that. See, they always have a win because when she's not in that school being teacher of the year and on all these platforms and magazines and people writing articles about her, she running around here saying, Pastor, I want to meet with you, Bishop, because I want to help us get a podcast so you can help spread the gospel. She humble. That's her worship. That's her worship. I, I, I enjoy Dr. Gilmore. Because on her way home, I, I'm on my way home, but if y'all need me to stop by the church and do something, you need some paper shredded, could you hold punch? I have a stack of hole punch. No, I'm Dr. Gilmore. I don't hole punch nothing. No, that's not her portion. Her portion is, yes, yeah, sir, whatever you need. You want me to carry your bags? You want me to go get you some coffee? I need two donuts. You go bring me some donuts? Yes, sir. You go get me some ice cream? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, that's, no, no. She don't. Well, I'm, who are you talking to? I'm Dr. Gilmore. I've been to Clemson and Alabama University. Roll Tide. She don't go through them churches. She just as humble. And then when I pull up my $5 for the coffee, she says, sir, please keep that. I give her the $5 for the ice cream. Uh, don't insult me like that. To offer me money is an insult, Bishop. I, I, I am honored to have the opportunity that I can humble myself and all that God has done for me just to go get you some coffee. That's true worship. My question to you is, when will you stop bringing God your mess and your mistakes? Truth and fellowship is an opportunity for you to bring your miracles to God. And it ain't about how anointed you are. You don't run the church for you to tell the pastor where you're going to serve. Ain't that so? Glory be to God. Amen. We always have a win when we worship God. I just want to tell you today, your winning is in your worship, but it ain't in your singing. It ain't in your singing. Yeah, Miss Mary. That's why I love our conversation. Because you're on a national platform speaking for major corporations. But when you walk in my office with that pocketbook and that pad to your chest, and with tears in your eyes, you sit before me and say, Pastor, what you need me to do? It don't matter what you need, Pastor. I'm right here. You can count on me. That's your worship. Even if I never called you, just the fact you was willing to worship God. That's why you never want for anything. That's why you always have. That's why God will bless you in your time. See, see, don't let nobody fool you. It ain't, it ain't at this altar when somebody putting oil on you. It's at the altar that you build where you offer God your miracle. We're so busy wanting somebody to touch us and we fall back. And ain't nothing wrong with that. There's a time, a place, and a space for all of that. But I'm talking about real winning. Real winning is when you can obey God. God speaks. After we've done all that singing, after we've done all that shouting, after we've done all that glorifying God, I want to be able to hear God tell me, now is the time for you to bring me a miracle. Lord, help me, Jesus. We worship with a glad heart. The Bible said in spirit and in truth. True worship is we bring in God our mercies. Stand to your feet. Can we take out a moment? And what? While the music is softly we done sung <laughs> we done shouted we done gave God praise the woman of God
God said something so powerful this morning. She said, there's a sweet spirit in this place. That means that God is here. But what good is him being here and not say nothing? What good is God being here and not giving you an opportunity, Norma, to do something that would depict your honor and your humility? Paying homage. What good is that? But the Bible says God gave Abraham an opportunity. And this time, he tempted Abraham again. And with urgency, with an emphasis on being specific, Abraham started working. Because he wanted God to know, I need this wind. Because remember, Isaac was a teenager. The win for Abraham is that he would be the father of many nations. And Abraham had yet was not the father because he only had Isaac. God wanted Abraham to give him his miracle. Now this is amazing. God knew he already had planned to give us his miracle. Jesus. Y'all will get it in a minute. Whereby salvation would be unto everyone that believed. God said, I'm willing to give my miracle. Are you willing to give your miracle? Watch this here. We grieve when God tells us to give our miracle. But we don't grieve when I tell you he gave his miracle. Why you don't have the same pain? Why you're not upset? People are saying when they go through tragedies, <laughs> where was God? I'll tell you where God was. He was at the same place when they took his son. He had not moved. It's amazing how we can go through and question and judge and come against God, come against God's servants when we go through. But we don't have that same feeling, those emotions when we understand about what he went through. So can we just worship him? Let's just get in a posture of humility. And let's take our time and just say, God, I worship you. God, we bow down. And we worship you. Those of you who are watching me from around the globe, it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in a car, you can have to pull over. Why don't you just right where you are? Get in a posture of worship. If you're in here today and you really need a win, why don't you come to the altar? I don't know who I'm talking to, but you really, really need a win. Your win is at your place of worship. Why don't you come and just use this altar, this place as an altar? And why don't you worship God where you can experience your win? I, I don't know what your win is. I don't know if it's healing in your body, peace in your mind. I don't know and don't really care. What I do care about, though, is that this place of worship. Worship him. Worship. Just come and bow down. Erect a place where you can talk to God and God will talk to you. He just God, I, I surrender everything I got. For you are worthy of it all, Father. That's what we're telling him. You're worthy, God, of everything. I'm giving you all I have and all I ever be, God. You can count on me from this day forward. I need a win, God. from you are all things God yeah. and to you are all things can you worship him right where you are take your time let's not rush y'all bow down whatever it is God would have you surrender surrender it you win. Whatever you got to do, obey it. God, speak to your people today. 
God, your people have come. They built an altar, oh God, before thee. They're not coming with their mess, God. They're coming with their miracle. God, you know everything about us. God, they're willing to surrender it all to you, oh God. For that win. Whatever it is, God. Bring your miracle to the altar today. Whatever it is. Bring your miracle. Bring your miracle right now. Surrender it all to God. God, we surrender it all to you. God, we thank you. That's it right there.